Hey everybody, David the AI Guide here. Welcome to another episode. So we tried last Wednesday doing this really for the first time where we have a video and comments and we're going to do it again. This video is from CNET and it's about NASA developing a humanoid robot. And this is cool because this is a good counterpoint to Boston Dynamics who does a very good job at self-promotion, uh, but NASA does a pretty good job too. So let's start the video and I'll make comments as we go along and here we go. This robot was built in less than four months and it helped engineers design what we expect to be one of the first general purpose humanoid robots that you can buy. So, this is very interesting. First of all, the development timeline was really quick on this. And the second thing is they're building a robot that'll be commercially available. This is QDH, or Quick Development Humanoid from startup Aptronic. Just watch how we can navigate all these obstacles on the ground. It's no pushover. I so NASA is helping Aptronic create this robot, and NASA, of course, does cutting-edge research into both AI and robotics. Either. The type of walking that we do is called dynamic walking. Really what that means, just for the general public, is walking like a human, walking dynamically, dynamically balancing. That's Aptronic CEO Jeff Cardenas. He says they developed QDH for a much bigger project. What QDH is really showing off is this idea of dynamic walking, a functional system. And the things that we learned from that are now informing the design for the Apollo system. Apollo is a general purpose humanoid robot that Aptronic has partnered with NASA to develop. No, it's not going to space anytime soon, but NASA does want to encourage the development of humanoid robots that could eventually help on future space missions. So this is a very cool idea, right? Uh, right now, the schedule is for NASA to land people on the moon again in 2025, late 2025, but most likely 2026, with the usual delays that go along with trying to put humans into space, especially deep space. But much more importantly, Mars exploration, right? Because best case, you're six months away from Earth. If anything goes wrong, you got issues. But more than that, if, if they can really develop and shake down and get a humanoid robot to work that will help set up a permanent space co colony or semi-permanent space colony on Mars, that's a huge, huge help. Now, we can't show you what Apollo actually looks like because Aptronic hasn't actually shown it to the public yet. So here's what we do know. It stands about five foot eight, about the size of an average human, weighs about 160 pounds, and it can lift about 55 pounds. Also, it's a general purpose humanoid robot. So what is that? So that means that unlike all robots that exist today, which are built and designed for doing one specific task, typically, loading and unloading a machine, or doing a particular step on an automotive assembly line, or like we did a stretch robot the other day, that one was unloading a truck. So that is not even close to a general purpose robot. A general purpose robot would be a huge breakthrough. What does that mean exactly? We see robots all the time that are designed to do a specific task, like move boxes, or make a pizza. What we have yet to really see is a robot that can do a lot of different things. We think about it like the iPhone of robots. One hardware platform, and now you can use software to update what that hardware platform can do, and the applications become limitless. And So that's pretty cool, right? That means that this robot ultimately should be able to do virtually any task on the moon or Mars for NASA, right? Load and unload stuff, build things, carry things across distance, 
um, you know, it's almost endless. And the reason for a humanoid robot is that we've designed the whole world for the human form. All of our built environment is designed for the human form. And so you don't want to change the environment around what the robot can do. You want the robot to fit into the human world. So that's a really interesting comment, right? There haven't been any general purpose robots yet, obviously. And so when there is one, it needs to fit into things as they exist. This is very, very similar to the way a new computer system fits in at work, right? The computer system often is adapted to the way things are done at a specific company. There are some computer systems that force the company to change to accommodate the computer system, but those are much more difficult to implement. And so by taking this approach with this robot, it'll eliminate many, many difficulties of this robot actually being useful. Of course, Aptronic isn't the only company working on a humanoid robot. The most obvious other examples being Boston Dynamics with its Atlas robot and Tesla's Optimus, which was revealed for the first time late last year. Now, Apollo's roots go back to Aptronic's first robot called Astra. Astra was really showing this idea of versatile manipulation. And in the video, that's what you're seeing, is you're seeing it grab a variety of different objects uh, that it hasn't seen before. The way that we're controlling that system is via teleoperation. So there's actually someone behind the scenes that is remotely controlling that robot. And we're really just demonstrating the versatility of a single platform to do a whole wide range of things. And it's worth. Yeah. So uh, as you can tell from what the CEO of Aptronic just said, this is a complicated task to develop a robot that's actually able to do many different things. And there hasn't been as much uh, publicly available stuff on Tesla's robot. That's why I've focused on uh, Boston Dynamics robot and now this one. But there are other robots out there that are already working and suited for specific purposes out in the world. And one of them we've talked about that has been tested in malls on the West Coast, which is the greeter in a shop that knows what you bought the last time and makes recommendations for this trip. Worth noting that several companies right now are testing Astra for various use cases. So the big question is, when are we actually gonna see Apollo? Well, Jeff told me that Aptronic plans to show it to a small group of people at South by Southwest next month, the rest that, by the way, is March. This video is very new. And so we're talking about March of 2023, first showing to a select group of people. Most of us are going to have to wait until later this year. Now, you might be wondering, how much is Apollo actually going to cost? Aptronic says they're hoping to keep that price under $100,000. Now, that would be really impressive, pretty affordable for a general purpose humanoid robot like that. So that's really interesting because, you know, if you go out and buy a high end Tesla, you're spending a hundred grand or more. So think about the utility of a general purpose robot in your life versus a car that you only use every once in a while. Whereas the general purpose robot can set the table, load the dishwasher, unload the dishwasher, start the laundry, take the laundry out of the dryer, um, vacuum, mop, make the bed. Oh my God, this is, so that, that is huge value for the price. And as we know, with exponential technologies, it starts out expensive, a hundred grand is expensive. Let's face it, most people still do not spend a hundred thousand dollars on a car, but as it starts to hit mass market penetration, the cost starts coming down, coming down, coming down, like televisions, and eventually they're made by the tens or hundreds of thousands and are cheap. So we're just gonna have to wait and see if they can pull that off. But what do you think? How do you think it will compare to other robots like Atlas and Tesla's Optimus? Let me know in those comments. 
So this is interesting. <laughs> Uh, he did not mention Toyota, who was well into development at Toyota Research with a similar robot. And we've talked about the fact that Tesla and Toyota's car companies are inventing robots and why they're doing that. If you want to know more, go back to the last video about the Tesla robot. But there are going to be a number of players in this market, and many of them are extremely well-funded. Tesla has billions in revenue. Toyota has billions in revenue. So these are companies that are well able to bear the cost of an R&D project like this, and then roll it out, and for it to have a huge impact on the world. And it will, and as I've mentioned, this is February of 2023. Apollo will be unveiled next month, March of 2023. And I have said that it is not unreasonable to think that when you walk into Starbucks in the second half of 2025, that you see a robot in there either making coffee or serving people, most likely start out just like Flippy and the fryer robot and all these other robots in the food industry doing the tasks first and later will come the human interaction. But very, very interesting stuff. So thanks so much for tuning in. Click the links below. Get my book on Amazon, The Beginner's Guide to AI, History of AI and Current Impact on 10 Different Industries and the second link, free resources. Everything in the resources is totally free. Why not take advantage of it? Thanks so much. See you next week and have a great rest of the week and weekend.